I bet you could go on the street and ask 10 people if they, if, you know, if they knew what was happening to the wild horses out west, and I bet you 10 would say absolutely not. Wild horses being uh, singled out for just about every problem that is happening ecologically in the western uh, part of the United States, specifically the southwestern United States. Uh, if there's some kind of degradation of uh, the environment, the, the wild horses blame for it. There is uh, approximately 8 million cattle on public lands compared to 20,000 horses. Um, the riparian damage done to streams and ponds are not done by the horses, that's done by the cattle. Wild horses range anywhere from 10 to 25 miles a day. The cattle stay right around water holes or, or streams or their water source. And they're very destructive to these uh, sources of water. Whereas a wild horse comes to it once or twice a day and that's it. But they're getting blamed for all of this, so they're pulled off the land. The cattle that's on the, uh, on the public lands, uh, they uh, are put there through uh, grazing leases <clears throat> provided by the federal government, basically, although some are provided by states. And to give you a little background on that, when the uh, Western Territories applied for statehood and were accepted as states in the United States, they were given a couple tracts of land by the federal government. And the states were responsible, they're supposed to be responsible stewards of this land, and the money that they generated from that was to uh, finance K through 12 educations in the states. And the land wasn't, um, it wasn't contiguous, in other words, it wasn't one, one tract land backing up to another, so it wasn't very desirable. And they put it up for uh, grazing rights for local ranchers. And this has gone on for over 100 years, and it's gotten to the point now where these ranchers feel like this is their land. And a lot of the, the public grazing land goes along with the, with the ranch. They sell the ranch, the grazing rights go with it. And it's these bids for the grazing rights are, are set up where these ranchers get right for the last bid in a lot of states, where if I went in there and wanted to bid for use of that land, the rancher could wait until the last day of the bid and then just outbid me. And, and sometimes they don't even have to have a higher bid. They can get it just uh, arbitrarily given by the people of the state that are in charge of the land. And the banks are tied into this because the, the ranch's value is tied into the grazing rights that are with the land. So if they pulled off uh, the grazing rights from the ranch, where it might be worth a million dollars with the grazing rights, may only be worth a half a million. So the bank would be losing money if uh, the mortgage was turned into them for that for the land. When I are given these leasing rights on public lands, uh, they uh, divert the water that's on the, on the streams and the ponds to the watering tanks for their cattle and livestock, and thereby uh, uh, keeping uh, a lot of the wildlife from uh, access to the, to the water. And they fence in some of the, these water tanks too, and there's, I've got pictures of where wild horses are lying dead outside of barbed wire fences, and the cattle are fat and happy and well watered and fed inside the fencing. And this is uh, against the law as far as what the, the uh, federal government has set up when they um, put out these uh, grazing leases. And in many areas, it's the entire water supply that they've diverted. And uh, so the wild horses and other game don't have access to it, and of course they can't uh, survive. And in many cases, like the Pryor Mountains in uh, northwestern Wyoming and southeastern Mo uh, Montana, the, the Wild horses have gotten so high up in the up in the Pinion Canyon area where no other wild animal except uh, big bighorn sheep would even uh, venture to go. So they're pretty much driving them off, you know, the, the best land that the public had, public lands available. And they treat them like they're livestock, and they're actually more than livestock because they're pets. People that have, have horses now don't. It's not like a cow. You, you, I mean, you, you can get close to a cow and have them almost like a pet, but not like a horse. There's, a, there's some kind of a bond, and you think about this. We're a predator, and they're a prey animal, and yet we can get them to let us jump on their back. They, they completely trust you. 
Next to a dog is probably the best pet people have. So when they when they people say, well, it's just livestock, it's not true. It's more than livestock. As you know, they've led us into war and everything. They've been by our side all, until we've got uh, cars and that stuff. We, we, we couldn't survive without a horse. And then all of a sudden we get the car and we just abandon them. And then we just keep on pushing them off like we did the Indians in their reservations and smaller and smaller land as we urbanize America and there's less and less place for them. Like we've done more to destroy the American West in the 200 years that we settled it than the Indians did for the 2,000 years that they lived there. It's just amazing. <laughs>